Alright guys, uh, this is video number six here. Um, I, uh, I'm getting to be uh, a lot of videos here, so I'm, I skipped a few steps um, and just wrapping them all into one video here. But um, I've been really hard at work. Uh, I got all my tools just scattered all over the place, drilling and grinding and cutting and anything you can do with a piece of aluminum. I've done it. You can see metal shavings all over and that's after I vacuumed briefly already. Um, but um, yeah, it's kind of a pain in the ass, but um, I got the actual light part all but done here. I decided that I'm not going to go with an enclosure. Um, several reasons why is because uh, one of the main reasons is because I want to optimize heat um, dissipation and if I put it in an enclosure that will um, impede the heat dissipation so I want to keep the heat sinks kind of bare like that hopefully I won't need to add any fans but I'm prepared to add some fans if I need to um, one thing I did uh, change in my design was I'm doing a two-part uh, system here. One is actual light, which is what you see there. And the other is going to be the driver module box. And they're going to be housed uh, in a separate container um, box that will go in the cabinet. And that way I don't need to have all them drivers hanging above my tank adding to uh, heat or anything like that or possible corrosion damage you know they're going to be down in the cabinet and they're going to be fed in via this plug connector right there it's just a molex connector let me flip my light on you can see i've got only um six pins um occupying this plug and then I have the um, pin out right there just a basic sketch um, positive negative royal blue positive negative royal blue so that's for the two royal blue drivers that I'll have and then the bottom one is the neutral white positive and negative which is in the middle here so I've got them labeled and then I'm gonna be making the um, cord I still got to wrap this in some um, cord conduit type stuff or whatever, some flexible conduit, make it look a little neater, I guess. I'm thinking about doing that, but uh, yeah, I, I like the two-part unit idea. I see a lot of guys on the forums and they got their freaking drivers stacked up on top of their heat sinks. That's about all only place you can put them if you're going to keep it in one unit like that. Um, but what you do when you put your big drivers over the top of that is you're going to block the heat. And these drivers, they're freaking huge. I mean, look at them. They're big. You take this thing and you set it up on top of here. And these guys got them stacked up like freaking cordwood on their heat sinks. And there, you know, I mean, look at how big that damn thing is, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to have all that stacked up on top of my heat sink, so uh, basically what I'm going to end up doing is having these in a box under my cabinet, and then there's my uh, alternating current cord, and then my dimmer, and then my power, um, black and white is, or black and red is the, um, power for one bank of LEDs one string and they'll be fed in via this connector system here you know and I have the male I have two females and two males um, obviously and I'm gonna need both and there's going to be um, a separate box that's gonna house these probably just make it out of wood something simple 
but uh, anyways as you can see I've got the um, hanger eyelets installed on the back and I've actually drilled holes to get the cord down inside the fixture to the LED banks and then I'll flip this over and I'll show you the other side of it here's the other side and um, basically uh, wired this all up in series um, they're just all stringed up like uh, just in series no parallel going on here it's just series and um, I've got some standoffs holding up the um, acrylic um, splash guard about a half inch away from my LEDs and that's just gonna keep the uh, water from splashing up and damaging the LED you know corrosion and all that shit um, <clears throat> but you can see the way I laid it out it's kind of um, I've got uh, these half circle looking wires connecting them and that's because these are clusters here and I'm planning on possibly upgrading well most likely I'll be adding some more drivers and some more LEDs in the future so what I'm going to end up doing is adding um, <clears throat> probably a star pattern around this around the XMLs in the middle and I'll probably maybe do like I just don't want to block my um, options you know what I'm saying so that's why I went around um, the area like that um, just so I can add more later on and then I did the same exact thing on this side it's wired up exactly the same So, I have yet to test the blue string yet. I just, I haven't tested either one. I'm just uh, kind of going all in here. And uh, now that the hard part's done, which is this, I'm going to be setting up the um, control box for all of this. And then um, there's going to be uh, the dimmer module. I'm going to be mounting it as like an auxiliary type connector um, and it's going to connect via RJ25 um, and I have some female RJ25 connectors I'm running out of time but right there are my RJ25 female connectors these are going to link the dimmer module to the dimmers and I'm gonna wire it up um, with a with a phone cord and that'll wire it up to my dimmer module and then the other cord they're gonna be two outlets so I can control this thing on um, timers as well in the meantime and before I do an Arduino uh, setup but for now it's just gonna be a manual dimmable system and uh, I'm going to hook it up to my Reef Keeper, which will turn the, the modules on and off. Um, basically, uh, yeah, there's a lot of info there for video number six. Um, stay tuned for the next video. I'll show you guys what I'm going to be doing with uh, the control box. Um, it's going to be really cool. And then hopefully video seven or eight we'll be able to get this thing tested in its um raw form basically um but anyway stay tuned for video number uh seven all right so take care